Fox 5 News at 10 starts right now. Please know that, uh, that we stand with you in your grief. Hundreds of people pay their respects in America's today to one of the officers killed in the line of duty. But first, we start with a news alert. What appeared to be a standoff in an apartment complex turned out to be anything but. Good evening to you. I'm Deidre Dukes. Thanks for joining us. Now, it all took place at the Capitol Gateway Apartments on Martin Street in Atlanta. Well, Fox 5's Natalie Fultz joining us live tonight from the scene. And Natalie, what can you tell us? Good evening, Deidre. Yeah, it turns out it was all one big lie. They thought it was a standoff situation, but it turns out it was not. It was quite a chaotic scene here outside of Capitol Gateway Apartments. You can see there are just a few police cars left, but I want to show you the video from earlier this evening when all of this was going down. Sergeant Warren Picard with Atlanta Police tells us that the SWAT team, that they got a call from a man operating a booting service. The man told police he had an altercation with a suspect who may have been armed. The man said that the suspect Suspect ran into the apartment complex and officials ended up getting a key from management and they originally thought there was an armed man inside one of those apartments and it turns out once they got the key and they got inside it was just an elderly man that was sleeping so they say that they got inaccurate information tonight that it was all just a big hoax nobody was arrested but residents were out here for hours and police utilized a whole lot of resources and it turns out that it was all a lie live in Atlanta Natalie Fultz five Fox 5 News. Natalie, thank you. Hundreds of people turned out today to pay their last respects to an officer shot and killed in Americas. The funeral for Nicholas Smarr was held today. He, along with Jody Smith, were shot and killed Wednesday in Americas. Smith also an officer for another agency. They were killed while responding to a domestic violence call. While other law enforcement officials who attended the professional services today say when tragedy happens, they come together for their fallen brothers and sisters. Regardless of where you're at, we're all guardians of the community. So every, when uh, there's an officer who has fallen in the line of duty, uh, we're all coming to show our respects because uh, that's what brothers and sisters in arms do. No word on funeral arrangements for Officer Smith. Now, the shooter, Menquel Lembrick, died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound on Thursday following a manhunt. Police are still working to figure out what led up to a murder-suicide outside of Fulton County Walmart. It happened at around 5 this morning in the parking lot of the store on Cleveland Avenue and East Point. Well, Fox 5's Claire Sims is live at police headquarters. And Claire, investigators say a man shot an employee before turning the gun on himself. Yeah, Deidre, detectives here at the East Point Police Headquarters believe that the man and woman involved knew each other and were involved in some type of romantic relationship that escalated to violence. That's so heartbreaking. That is so heartbreaking. Shock and sadness Sunday from shoppers at this Walmart on Cleveland Avenue. This is where East Point police say a domestic situation turned deadly. According to investigators, a female employee had just arrived for work an hour before opening when a man confronted her and shot her inside her car before taking his own life. Police say the pair had some sort of relationship, but aren't sure if they were dating, married, or divorced. Shatika Woods says she and her young daughter visit the store all the time. She was surprised to hear about the violence. But that's that's horrible. I feel bad. And if it, I, I feel like it may be somebody that I knew, but I shop here every day, every night. So I'm, I'm constantly interacting with different of uh, the employees. I hope it wasn't somebody I knew. Wow, that's, that's, sad. that's sad. Wood says the employees here are helpful and kind. She and others can't imagine what may have gone wrong and plan to keep the victim's family in their prayers. It's, un it's unfortunate what transpired, you know, and we can't take that back, so we just hope the best for our family. Yes, I'll that's pray all. For our condolences yes. go to our family. Investigators here in East Point have not released the names of the two people involved in that murder-suicide while they notify their family members. We are live in East Point. Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. Thank you, Claire. Burl Ellis.
Morales could soon resume his position as DeKalb County CEO as early as this week. DeKalb officials tell us interim CEO Lee May is expected to release a statement tomorrow. Officials also tell Fox 5 Ellis could be at the Board of Commissioners meeting on Tuesday morning. Ellis will also receive back pay from the county for the time he spent behind bars. The Georgia Supreme Court overturned Ellis's conviction for attempted extortion and perjury last month. According to a DeKalb County spokesperson, Ellis will be reinstated as CEO as soon as the paperwork is finalized. Well, turning to our weather now, another cold day, but things, oh, they sound like they're going to be changing. Fox 5 Storm Team Chief Meteorologist David Chanley in the Storm Center yep. tonight. Uh, kind of a mixed bag weather-wise. You're going to have a little bit of everything here in the forecast mm. in the coming days. Everything but winter weather precipitation, so that's, that's good news good. there, yes. <laughs> but we are going to see some rain be rolling in here, and as that happens, an oddity tonight, temperatures actually going to be warming up by early tomorrow morning. Let me show you what's going on outside right now. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. We were chilly today. We only hit 50 degrees here in Atlanta, but it's nice to see a little sun in some spots. But look at the low 40s we have out there. You can kind of see the wedge hanging in there. Look at 32 in Blairsville, 36 in Gainesville, 37 there in Athens, and you'd fall off into the 40s, and then it's 50 in LaGrange. Now, broaden the picture back out, and you can really see the wedge. Look how cold it is in Charlotte and Greenville, as opposed to Montgomery, Birmingham, Huntsville, Nashville, where the rain is right now, and this is coming our direction. And I'll show you how far away the frozen precipitation is. It's well up here across northern Indiana, the Great Lakes, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, so that's where the really core of the cold air is, and they're getting big time accumulating snow there. So we wait on some scattered showers. So overnight tonight, cloudy, warming trend, might have a few sprinkles by now and daybreak, but look at our temperature here in Atlanta. Yeah, we're going to be going upwards, up toward 50 degrees by early in the morning. So let's track the showers, shall we? Here we go. We stop the clock at, uh, say, 7 in the morning, and you see some scattered showers in the northern sections, maybe a few sprinkles there in some of the northern suburbs, but between 7, 8, 9 o'clock, they kind of make their way on into the metro Atlanta area. No storms with this, but beneficial rainfall. But look at the temperatures. As the rain begins, we're actually going to warm up. And with the passage of the front, we're going to be even warmer, upper 50s to near 60. Now, I don't think that's going to be the trend for the week. we got some other changes to talk about. We'll get to that coming up in about 20 minutes. Sounds good, David. Thank you. Well, for a special group of military families, today was anything but ordinary. Nearly 1,800 children and spouses of fallen U.S. military members had the chance to take the Snowball Express today. While the ride gives families from all over the country the opportunity to take an all-expenses-paid trip to the Dallas-Fort Worth area to enjoy a little fun while there. Well, this was the scene at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport today as some of the families in the Atlanta area prepared for takeoff. Every year they, we get together and we have a big send-off party here in Atlanta for those that live in this area. And we send them to Dallas for five fun-filled days. It's a chance for them to all be together um, that have a similar stories, so to speak, to tell and to just relax and enjoy the holidays. Well, this is the 11th year for the event. Uh, once in Dallas, their trip will include a tour of the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History, a private concert, and a fun night at Medieval Times. Well, still to come, protesters hit the streets of Turkey to speak out against recent violence in Istanbul. Plus, President-elect Donald Trump makes his first appearance on a morning show since the election. More on what he discussed coming up. And Justin's got our sports. Well, Deidre, if Julio Jones is going to miss his first game in almost two years, he picked a good day to do it. Frustrated residents take to the streets in Istanbul following deadly explosions this weekend. The protesters say the government is not doing enough to protect its citizens. On Saturday, twin bombings near a soccer stadium killed nearly 40 people. A police vehicle was the intended target in the attack. So far, no group has claimed responsibility. A bombing at a chapel in Cairo, Egypt, has left 25 people dead and 49 others injured. The explosion occurred as Sunday mass was about to end. Witnesses say the explosion may have been caused by an explosive device planted inside the chapel. The bloodshed coincided with a national holiday in Egypt, marking the birth of Islam's prophet Muhammad. The violence came two days after a bomb in another part of Cairo killed six police officers. Authorities are blaming a group that's been linked to the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood for that bombing. The roof of a crowded church collapsed in Nigeria on Saturday, killing at least 160 people. Morgues are now overflowing and the death toll is expected to rise. The Rainer's Bible Church had been under construction. 
Crews there were rushing to finish the building in time for a special ceremony to ordain its founder as a bishop. Hundreds of people, including high-ranking officials, were inside when that building caved in. The founder and the state governor were able to make it out without, without any injuries. It's not a good thing, uh, and we are really, really devastated that this could happen. Uh, but at the same time, I pray that people should be calm, and let's actually assess the situation. Let's see uh, the casualties that we have, and then be rest assured on the part of government. We'll do everything possible to make sure that this will never happen again in this state. Officials say the state government will investigate if anyone compromised building standards. A rare sit-down interview from President-elect Donald Trump this morning. Fox News' Brian Yenis has more on what he said. What I'm doing is so important. This is a calling. President-elect Donald Trump made his first appearance on a Sunday morning political show since the election, sitting down with Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday. One of the biggest questions is his pick for Secretary of State. ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson is on the short list, but Mr. Trump says he isn't ready to confirm anything. He does massive deals in Russia. He does massive deals for the company, not for himself, for the company. He's the Secretary no, of State. No, no, but I have, I have <laughs> tremendous respect for him. Mr. Trump also dismissed missing the CIA's report that Russia influenced the election so he could win. I don't believe it. Uh, I, I don't know why. And uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, they talked about uh, all sorts of things. Every week it's another excuse. But that's in stark contrast to the reaction from other Republicans. Members of the Senate Armed Services Committee, including Senator John McCain, calling for these claims to be fully investigated, saying the parties must work together. We would be working on a bipartisan basis. You can't make this issue issue partisan. It, it's just, it's too important. A fundamental of a democracy is a free and fair election. This is a form of warfare uh, for Vladimir Putin, who is a thug and a bully. For him to be trying to impact our elections, that we have to, there has to be, he has to be held accountable. The president-elect also made clear he's not interested in having daily intelligence briefings. I don't need to be told, Chris, the same thing. Every day, every morning, same words. Sir, nothing has changed. Let's go over it again. I don't need that. Trump's transition team says we could expect an announcement on who will be Trump's Secretary of State as early as this week. In New York, Brian Yenis, Fox News. Well, still ahead, we may be experiencing some cold weather in our area, but many other parts of the country are dealing with heavy snow. And we have eight brand new high school football state champions. We'll tell you about all the big winners next in Fox 5 Sports.